Survival games would suck without these 10 things to make them great. So what are these top 10 concepts and ideas that I speak about? So one of the other things that makes a survival game a survival game is the setting. You need to have a world, a place, uh, an island, a sea, what have you, where essentially it encourages you to explore, it encourages you to build, it encourages you to find things, to advance in technology and everything else. What I mean by this is that the world has to be in a situation where you feel like you have to survive. You can't just put someone inside of a bustling city with tons of people and everything else and call it a survival game because there's not really much survival unless you're going for like social survival and like social media is taking over the world or whatever else. But one of the main things is that you have to, as a player, feel like you have to progress. You have to make that next thing. You have to find that next thing. You have to fight this next monster. You have to cook that food. You have to do all these things to continue to survive. Open worlds and exploration go hand in hand in a survival game. Now the survival game can have an open world that's procedurally generated like Minecraft or I believe Valheim's worlds are procedurally generated. Or it can be a predetermined world like DayZ's open world or Project Zomboid's open world. And there can be various different things on this like The Long Dark has an open world but it's split off into segments that you have to load into but you can still explore this. The exploration of these open worlds is what truly gives, in my view, a survival game its depth and its overall feel. Choices and actions are a great way to make sure a survival game feels like a survival game. Giving the player a choice in what happens with their character, what they're doing, or what they're crafting, or where they base. All of these things matter in making sure that the characters understand that they were given the choice and they also must face the consequences. The consequences could be good or bad, but in reality, they made the choice or the action that spurred that problem to happen or that good thing to happen to them. This is a vital part of any survival game, giving people the true clear choice of what they chose to do and it makes it more of a sandbox feeling than a linear storyline path. One of the other important systems in a survival game, or rather what makes one, is crafting and more importantly in-depth crafting. See, it doesn't matter if you're inside a, a setting where you're starting from the Stone Age and working your way up, or a post-apocalyptic world, or on the water in the middle of the ocean, or what have you. All of these systems require crafting in some form or another. When you are able to craft in these survival games, it really gives you a sense of your characters thinking on their feet. They're adapting. They're trying to survive. They're not solely relying upon just what they are looting, but rather they're taking what they're able to loot or find in the world or create themselves and actually improving and making their life a little bit easier. Most crafting has to make sure it does one major thing. It makes it so the person feels like they're actually making tools or items of use. Crafting that doesn't really do that and does cosmetic is fine, but it has to have items of use before it has the cosmetics. This is really important to a survival game. So a day and night cycle and a weather system is actually really nice to have inside of a survival game. This makes you feel fully immersed in the game, the passage of time, it raining, it being sunny, it hailing, or just cloudy days. All of this stuff can actually play an effect other than just being immersed in it. It can also play an effect in whether or not you find the resources during the day or the night, whether certain things only come out during the rain, or if enemies become harder to kill in the nighttime, or if there are other situational things that can happen. So another thing in survival games is resources and resource scarcity. Now this isn't only just how rare or how hard it is to find something. This could be that the item is only in select biomes, certain areas can only be dropped by certain monsters or NPCs, or even that you have to essentially grind or essentially craft it out of a bunch of lower tier ingredients, but it takes a lot of the lower tier ingredients to make it. This is important for many aspects, for survival with food, hydration, and other situations, to crafting, to even just giving you a sense of wonder and amazement in exploring new and reachable areas, 
or even to just beating that boss and getting that one rare item that's going to make that ultimate um, crafting item you need, weapon, maybe new armor, or just give you something in bonus like a beacon from Minecraft giving you health or whatever else. Danger lurks around every corner in a survival game. Whether it's from the environment, or from a PvE situation, or a PvP situation. All of this really adds to the depth of a survival game. It gives you a sense of danger and actual caution when you're out exploring, or looking for new items, or maybe when yourself are trying to impose danger upon others. Maybe you want to get that rare item that only drops from maybe a certain boss. Valheim, for example, has its bosses directly tied to the progression of the player. Other games out there don't necessarily do that, but the bosses and or NPCs do drop interesting loot. Players might have, in a PvP situation, loot or items that you may need. Danger and threats inside a survival game are very important to making the survival game overall feel like you aren't just dancing through the daisies and just picking up whatever you want. You have to be aware of the danger that's ever prevalent. Character progression is one of the many forms in survival games that can truly bring a survival game to a new level. Whether this is going for progression and getting better at fighting, mining, collecting, harvesting, crafting, you name it. Character progression allows not only the character to progress and feel more attached to his character, but it also allows the game to actually slow your progress. Make it so that you can't essentially build a flying helicopter uh, when you literally just started in the Stone Age on certain kind of games. Or in certain games, being able to craft or make the most high-tiered weapon of all kind, because your character requ progression requires you to achieve a certain level of experience, skill points, accomplishments, or what have you, in this character progression to be able to reach those later and tier kind of goals. Character progression also makes it more immersive for the character because, let's face it, we all don't know necessarily how to build, I don't know, some sort of a type of machinery or how to properly build a furnace or whatever else. But as we become more adept with building and crafting, maybe our character gets better ideas of how things work or becomes more innovative, maybe you find blueprints or schematics but character progression is an important part of survival games. Base building in survival games is part of most survival games whether we like it or not. And base building doesn't need to be these magnificent palaces or overdone things. Base building is just the idea of a longer term persistence than your character can either carry or have on him at one time. Because many of the games that we play have a where we lose our items upon death mechanic. So having the ability to store your items longer term and whether a crate, a stash, or a full-fledged base with lots of chests and everything else is beneficial. Also, base building does offer us the chance to do some larger and better in-depth crafting. Sometimes base building in games allows us to have more complex versions of crafting that we normally wouldn't be able to do while we're out on the fly. And this is important to remember because we're not always going to be able to have all the tools and everything else we need realistically to be able to do some of these more advanced crafting features. Multiplayer or cooperative gameplay in survival games is, I would not say absolutely essential, but it really does help boost and make the survival game not only replayable, but also very enjoyable. Solo gameplay in these kind of games is amazing and a lot of fun, but eventually you end up facing obstacles or other problems as far as game time or other issues, or maybe you just want to spice things up and play with your friend. A survival game should encourage that playing with others, either PvP-wise, PvE-wise, or working together jointly as a team effort, or even just separate bases, is encouraged. Because in these survival games, the one thing you want to be able to do it is share it with the other people, have a community, have a place to go and show off to your friends what you were able to accomplish, achieve that monster or boss you were able to beat, and so much more. Now these points are what I think makes a survival game, and I think they're actually very good and on point, well, points. 
Now, I could be 100% right, I could be somewhere in the gray area, or I could be dead wrong. I could have missed some things, or maybe I didn't explain things well enough or even touched in depth about them. But these are overall the 10 things that I think make a survival game. Remember, survival games are meant to be fun and exciting, so it takes a wide range of views and ideologies and how people actually want a survival game to be. Remember, not everyone likes a super hardcore survival game. Other people like it really easy, and then there are pl plenty of people in between. Other people only play survival games to play with their friends. But we can all sit back and remember that survival games are fun because they allow us to do what we think we should be doing, and they are the kind of games that we enjoy. I hope you all have a wonderful time, and thanks for jumping in.